It's crazy town. The quicker we can become self-aware that we're the mayor of it, the better off we're going to be because then we're going to be open to public accountability. We're going to seek that out if we really want to play it safe and get the results we want. That's why all the top leaders have coaches, man. They're just success leads clues because they don't they don't want to cut any corners. So talking about activity-based indicators, activity-based indicators are the second component of a high performing team. Here they are. I'm going to show them to you. So here's the five components. Uh, it's creating that viral goal. Then we're always going to focus on the activities. And I'm foreshadowing a little bit, you know, I talked about that personal responsibility by focusing on public accountability. We got to be held accountable to focusing on the activities, right? Then you're going to have a dashboard, you know, some sort of, hey, like, here's the numbers we got to hit. Here's the amount of contacts we got to make to make sure we're, we're focused on those activity based indicators. That's kind of the key. So, you know, and then we're going to meet regularly to make sure we stay on them because it's hard to make ourselves do. They're uncomfortable. And that's those five components of any leadership team, right? And you see it all the time. I mean, you see it like, you know, if you're the only leader, that's where I say get a coach. If you're it, you know, we'll start at the top. If you talk to a, like a, a broker manager, you know, they often are the only guy and their ability to recruit and coach their agents and get into those productive ABIs is very hard. They're playing deal doctor all day long. I got to solve this system and that system and I got to do this and I got to do that. Maybe even handle my own sales. So they're on defense 24 seven. So they just focused on results and react to them, which means they've lost complete control over the growth of their business, which is a very deflating place to be. It's how you settle and start then justifying. This is where we're at. Team leaders do it all the time too. Well, it is because of all these excuses. And we've talked about that. That's 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 what we, we start focusing on those results and we stay away from those those activity based indicators. And I call this the status quo. OK, the status quo. I actually talk about this in my book, The High Performing Team, where I where I go through the five key components of a, a successful leadership team and the status quo is the stuff that we know that's going to happen in our business, if we just show up and suit up, go to our desk, check our emails, check our texts, check our voice messages maybe, and sit there and let people come to us all day. It's firefighting. I'm just going to respond to everyone else all day long. I'm going to do what they need. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to call that work. And I'm going to go tell my spouse I went to work today. Oof, what a tough day. Well, I bet it was. That sounds awful. You didn't do anything in alignment with your goals by your own design because you have a goal, a viral goal, component number one. And you know you must focus on activities, certain activities that you need to summon from inside that are in direct alignment with that goal. But you're so caught up in the status quo because it's easy. That's why I, you know, I just got to solve all my my agents' problems, or I gotta I gotta solve all my clients' problems. But I'm just too busy with the status quo to focus on my activities, and that's my current situation. That's just how it is because of my situation. And everybody's got a situation here. Been doing this for way too long, and so we've all got excuses. You're all unique in your situations. You're absolutely incorrect. It's all the same for all of you. You all got the same situation. I don't care about your particular market, the size of your office. I don't care about the size of your MLS. I don't care about the prices in your neighborhood. I don't care about the prices in your city. I don't care about the size of your city. I don't care if it's a big one, a small one. I don't care if it's high price or low price. I don't care about if you're new to it, you're young, you're old, you're experienced, you just got licensed, don't care. Same problems for everyone. You are not unique in any way. You are a number to me. And I'm saying that to make you understand you really are. But those excuses will sneak back in your head the minute you stop and, and get off the screen and my face ain't here anymore. You'll start saying, well, here's my reasons. My reasons, he's never seen this reason before. I've seen thousands of agents. <laughs> I've seen it. I promise you, even if I haven't seen it, I'm still right. Nothing new's coming. 
Make sense? That's status quo. We will we will find a reason to say that was just too much to handle. Here's what agents will do. Agents literally will have, you know, three buyers looking for houses and one or two under contract and say they're too busy to generate business. Unreal. I've been coaching at every single level and I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now that agents before they're a solo agent needs to have 10 pending and 10 buyers looking before they're too busy to lead generate for three hours a day. I'm not joking, because that's at that level, that's when I start saying, you know, hire a full-time, you know, admin or start looking at buyer's agents. That's when we started talking about team building conversations, because you can still handle that in a normal 40 hour work week. But agents will start saying, oh no, I can't handle that. Well, I don't know what you're doing all day with your two transactions. Like literally, there isn't that much that happens five days a week. Sorry, that just is what it is. That's the reality. Now, for the leaders out there, I mean, same deal. I'm too busy to like, you know, call 10 agents this week and set two appointments because all of my agents have so many questions. There's so much to handle in my office. Same deal. I've ran and coached many, many agents, many of them. Uh, many of my offices have had 400 to 500 agents in and I can tell you right now that a leader can hold 10 recruiting appointments a week until they get up over a hundred agents in their brokerage. Then they're gonna, they might need some help, like someone to ha help with the agents in the office a little bit, but they can do both because there shouldn't be that much. And we, we have a skill development problem. They're, they're people pleasing too much. They're wasting too much time. They're not efficient. Something's happening with their systems if they don't. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to recruit 10 appointments a week. That's That was hell. I, I don't think I could do that again, um, but possible, you know, but I did that for years when I was starting my brokerage and I'll tell you, that's hard to do. And I'm not wishing that on anyone. So don't get the numbers confused. I'm just telling you that's, I mean, that's what's possible in a 40 hour work week because it is certainly possible. So saying you don't have enough time because of the status quo is an absolute excuse. You make the time, you do it, and then we find out what you're doing wrong by way of time management and your systems in your office. That's how we find out the problem. I mean, that's how we find leaks in plumbing, right? We run water through it and see where it leaks. Let's run water. Let's put some growth in your, in your business. Let's start focusing on ABIs and seeing where our time is breaking down. And then we establish more efficient systems in our business so that it can handle the regular performance of activity-based indicators. That's the key to it. That's the idea. If, if your clients as an agent or as a leader, your agents are coming to you and complaining or maybe leaving you or your clients are leaving you because you can't, you know, agents can't find them a house, you know? We'll say, oh no, I, I don't have time now. I'm not providing my customer service. That's not who I am. I gotta look at my results aren't working. That's because I'm spending too much time, which is never the case on my activity-based indicators. No, that's not the case, but that's what happens all the time. The vast majority, you know, that's why like 10% of agents do 90% of the business. The other 90% go back into the RBIs because of that crazy excuse. They have one client complaint and they blame growth activities on it. Happens all the time. Happens all, that's why this is crazy town. It's that easy to go back there, guys. So as leaders, we must tell agents that no, 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 we got to stay on our on our on our uh, activity based indicators. We got to keep generating business. Same is true for leaders, right? There's only so much. I mean, agents will leave brokerages, and that's usually a lateral move. It just is what it is. Like the, I got to change something. The last thing I'm going to do, the last thing I'm going to do is start generating business. So what am I going to do? I'm going to change brokerages. It's some change. It's an easy change. I was getting new cards, new signs, go over there, maybe justify it by getting a new commission split. You know, you know, maybe it's a little better. They gave me a sweetheart deal or whatever. You know, 90% of zero is still freaking zero. You know, it's a total lateral move. Your life doesn't change at all. You're taking the problem with you, right? As an agent. 
you know, the problem's you, you're not lead generating. You go over there, you're still not gonna lead generate. You know, like that, you know, that, you know, that's where that problem goes in. And leaders all get caught up in this. I mean, this is, you know, if I'm the sales manager, I feel, oh no, now I gotta, I can't recruit. I gotta take care of the flock. I gotta, I gotta people please these people and maybe take them to lunch. Doesn't solve their problem at all. I'll take them to lunch, just buddy, buddy up and guilt them into staying. The relationship. We find that problem all the freaking time. You gotta understand this <clears throat> from a leadership perspective, okay? Leading is like parenting in a lot of ways, especially in real estate. So real estate team leaders must know this. Broker owners, managers must know this. Agents must even know this. In real estate, leadership's weird. It's not like leadership in the W-2 world. There you lead by position. Like we, we call that management. You're in charge, they work for you. If they don't do what they're saying, you fire them and hire someone else and replace them. That doesn't work in real estate. Starting with agents, their clients will fire them and hire another agent. Getting up into real estate leadership with teams and brokerages, those agents will just walk across the street to another brokerage. Everybody's an independent contractor from top to finish in the real estate industry. That's why we don't have management in real estate. We have leadership. We have to make them want to follow us, want to choose us. That's the difference between leadership and management. Management is just by position. It's much easier to be a manager. You're just going to manage things the way they are. Whereas with leaders, we got to make people follow us to a different location, which means we're going to grow this thing. We're going to get you to sell more real estate. With agents, it's get, get them to buy that house. Get them, get them in the home they want, right? That's leadership. We're going to lead them. We're going to change, right? Now, here's the problem. To a certain extent, that, that leadership relationship, I, I think it's most like parenting. It's more like parenting than it is the W-2 world, okay? Where you have, you know, salaries and paid per the hour and all that. Quite frankly to me, it's all, you know, ugh. Because you're so limited, you know, like I'm going to get my raise this year. Maybe not, maybe, you know, like, oh, you just can't do anything with it. So, but leadership is more like parenting than that. And here's why. You have to focus on your ABI. So there's only so much you can do for them. You have to set your standards as a leader. Here's what I do. So for, for managers, it's like, or you know, leaders in real estate, it's here's what we do. We're gonna tell you to do this. Here's our coaching program. Here's our training program. Here's our onboarding systems. Make sure those are good. Don't get me wrong. And then focus on your activity-based indicators regularly. Like we're gonna reach out to this many agents every single day or week to make sure they're coming into the office. We're gonna reach out and conduct a certain amount of coaching appointments with our agents. We're gonna hold this many training classes every single week, all those different things. And there's many, many more that we coach our, 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 our leadership clients on. We're gonna do all those things to ensure, but after that, if the agent doesn't show up, and we've done all the things that we're supposed to do. And they, you know, just like a parent with a kid. I wish my kids did everything I said, but they don't. Love them anyway. Just is what it is. Just be there for them. At some point, they may come around. You know, maybe all of a sudden something happens in their life and they don't have, and they don't have any sales or income or they really need it for something. And then they're like, what do I do? That's when you jump in. That's your shot to parent. Same's true with your clients, you know? So agents with their clients, same deal. You love on them. You love on your database, even when they don't want to buy or sell. They may choose somebody else for some ridiculous excuse. Well, you know, we were at the house and we just, you know, we just wanted to buy it. And they said they could represent us too. Doesn't mean you just divorce that database member. I know you're bitter. Love on them anyway. You put out the good, it comes back. And that's why it's more like parenting. You set your standards and you live up to those. And those are your ABIs and they're tied to your goals. You, you love them so much, we put them on a dashboard. We meet about them regularly, hold ourselves accountable to them, do all those things we talk about with the five key components. We set up our systems for our onboarding, our training around those ABIs. 
And then we do that. We trust that. And we still focus on them. And then we can go recruit. Then we can go do those things. And agents may come and go, just like kids make bad choices. They may leave the business anyway. That's going to happen. Just like we have coaching clients that don't make it. They don't do what they're supposed to do. That's the nature of this industry. A lot of them don't believe it's crazy town. They don't realize they need that accountability. They don't want to do it. And they're going to make bad choices. But that's leadership in real estate. And that's the key to it. It's crazy town. The quicker we can become self-aware that we're the mayor of it, the better off we're going to be because then we're going to be open to public accountability. We're going to seek that out if we really want to play it safe and get the results we want. That's why all the top leaders have coaches, man. They're just success leads clues because they don't, they don't want to cut any corners. That's the way. Good leadership will attract mother, other talent. So being self-aware, that's everything. Being self-aware, that's everything.